So assembling the S1 is much simpler than it looks. And if we look at the manual, there's only a few steps. And they actually want us to start off with putting the hot end assembly onto the X axis cradle and also the clip. But I think what we're gonna do is skip to putting the upper portion to the base first. And then we'll go back and do this. And then we'll install our screen following by the spool holder. And believe it or not, guys, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and grab our bolts. And you guys can see we got a few in here. So connecting the gantry to the base we'll use these large black bolts and we're gonna need four of them but they do include an extra one just in case you need it so if you guys maybe can tell but there's little cutout grooves on each side of the base and that's where the gantry is gonna sit and the bolts go through the bottom into the channel so it kind of falls in let's go ahead and go sideways so however you gotta do this, but basically you grab a bolt and you go underneath. So you can go off the edge of the table or you can even put something underneath to pry it up. And I got a box of filament here that we can do that with. And you guys can see it's quite easy now to get it started. So you're gonna need the largest wrench and all I'm gonna do is just run them down and not tighten it yet. And we'll flip around to the other side and do the same thing here. So I'm just running them down for now. And the reason for that is because we wanna run the X axis all the way down. And so I'm just gonna use the belt here in the back to move it up and down. Or you can just grab a coupler and turn it. The belt makes it a lot quicker. And the reason we're going down is because we want the spacing between this channel and this one to be as close as possible to what's already adjusted here. If we bring this down, which by the way, there's something taped here to the side, a wire we can get a more precise distance between the two channels and now we can go ahead and snug them up underneath. So you wanna go you know, relatively tight, but you do have a lot of leverage with this wrench, so be careful not to over tighten it. And same thing on the other side. And as simple as that, we got the upper portion connected to the base. So let's bring this back up a bit. And now we'll go to the other steps, which first one is to install the hot end assembly onto this cradle. So I'm gonna turn this thing. So if we look at this assembly, we can see here on the side, we have one, two, three little brass threads there. And those actually will line up right here on this bracket, just like that. So it kind of sits in there and drops in. It actually holds itself. And the bolts that we need are in this little bag called M36. And I believe there are four of them. So yeah, pretty straightforward, just putting the bolts through, snug them all up, and that's it. Now our hot end assembly is connected to the cradle on the x-axis. So we also have this clip that goes here on the back and we'll install it when we do the wiring. Let's go ahead and install the display, which goes right here, and we can go ahead and remove the bracket. And if you guys can see, there's a little cutout here and these little grooves here actually go into that slot. Yeah, we need three of these M418 bolts, which will go through the bracket and then into the channel. I'm gonna prop this up so it's a little easier and maybe you guys can see a little better. But yeah, again, pretty straightforward and everything kind of falls into place. And the last one on the bottom and that's it. And now all we gotta do is plug in the display here in the back with this wire that comes out from underneath. Just like that. And then we can just clip it on there and that's it. So for the next part, we're gonna be installing this spool holder. And one thing I noticed here is that on the filament detector, it doesn't say which way is in and out. So I'm guessing the plug goes out away or maybe it doesn't really even matter and there's a brass bushing on each end so yeah the way this thing mounts it just clips onto the channel so you just simply put it over and then clip it down so yeah it just clips over and goes down just like that we can go ahead and plug that in it just comes out of the channel here on the top yeah you just want to align this part of the spool closer to the middle of the printer. So we probably need to go to the side a little more. And the reason you want it more towards the middle, I guess we are a little limited here on this wire, but in any case, the closer you get to the middle, the more even the filament will be distributed between the two ends of the hot end. So, cause you don't want to, you know, have it way too much this way where the filament will kind of try to do this because as it goes higher and higher, it's going to really bend. And even though this can turn, you know, you want to center it up. So it has the least amount of stress as it's running through. And believe it or not, guys, that's pretty much everything that we need to install. I'm going to go ahead and throw these 
wrenches in here and I went ahead and put the rest of the tools in here and all the other things that came with the printer. Very nice large compartment. And so the only thing we got left to do is just plug the wiring in. So let's go to this side and you guys can see we got a main cable that comes out the side of the printer. About midway we got some wires and these are for the X motor and the X end stop switch. So the X motor plugs in right here. Let's go ahead and plug it in. And then the X axis end stop switch is underneath here. And we'll go ahead and plug that in. And so this wire continues to go around and you guys can see there's a little sticker here that shows that it goes into this little clip and this just literally slides in onto this bracket here and maybe you guys can see the little rails there. So like this with the hook pointing down. And so this part here can literally go right into here. And the other end will plug in into the hot end. Let's go ahead and twist back around. First you want to open up these tabs here. And then as you insert it, they'll close onto the plug. It kind of clips on. And also we have the strain relief here in the back that we kind of have to insert the flat wire into. And just like that, we gotta make sure it has a good reach, which is great. Plenty of slack. Everything seems perfect. So that's how this wire goes on. Now if we go back around to the same side, you guys can see our X axis motor here is not connected yet and the wire is taped down to the base. And we can go ahead and plug that in. So this is one of our Z axis motor and we have another on the other side. The Y is already all connected. So let's go ahead and connect this one. Now this one connects a little differently as the motor is already connected to this little extension. And if we look here on the corner, we can see here there's a junction. There's like some rubber caps on here that we need to take off. And so the first one says a Z axis. So that's going to be for this motor. The next one over, which is the middle one, is an expansion port. And this is a 24 volt power supply, which for the pro model powers the light bar. And so since this one doesn't have the light bar, we're just going to leave that empty. And the last one over is the filament detector, which comes here out of the bottom of this rail, this wire here that was taped to the side that we untaped earlier. And that's simply going to plug at the other end. And we could probably use this cover here to cover up that middle port since we're not going to use it and use the snippers here to cut off the other pieces so it's nice and clean and we're not going to have dirt going into the socket. So yeah, and as simple as that guys, that is all our wiring. Also, the one here underneath for the display. So we're not quite done yet because we need to check a few things like our rollers and our belts. So let's start with the rollers here on the bed. So we have two stationary and two adjustable with the eccentric nuts. And if we go here to the side and maybe I'll take this off real quick. So it's kind of out of our way. And you can do this, you know, before you assemble the whole thing also. Yeah, if you guys can see, there's two rollers there and there's eccentric nuts. And so what I like to do is go with my fingers underneath and spin the roller in one spot to check how much tightness there is. And actually mine are kind of tight or at least tighter than I would like them. And so you're going to grab this double ended wrench that's included. And we're simply just going to turn the eccentric nut a little bit to get farther and closer away from the channel. All right, so I loosened that one a bit and now we'll go to the one in the back and loosen it and that feels a little better. And so what you're trying to get is where the roller can kind of spin in one spot when you do a little burnout. If it's too tight, you won't be able to turn it in one spot. If it's too loose, the whole bed will wobble. So you want to tighten it up ever so slightly where the bed doesn't wobble and there's not so much tension around the channel with the rollers. Because if it's too tight, it's going to wear them out and plus you're not going to get a very nice smooth roll. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. So the other thing we can do is we can also adjust our tension on the belt and you guys can see mine is quite loose. So we got a knob here up front, but be careful not to over tighten it. If you're too tight, you might get some vibrations into the build plate. You guys can't really see this or I can't really show it, but on this end here, if you look kind of like from the back this way, you can see the roller inside and see if it lines up. And for the back, there's a little sight right here that you can see how it lines up there. So on mine, it's fine. It's not on the edge. And so on the front, you guys can see we got a couple of little bolts here that hold this plastic piece. And if you do need to adjust this, you can grab a wrench and loosen this and then offset it and tighten it where you need it. And you might want to check this anyway because mine was already quite loose. And so that's how you can adjust this piece here to line up the, the tensioning idler pulley inside to center the belt on it. And for the belt, you don't want it, you know, too tight because if you make it too tight, you can literally play music on it. If you hear notes, that's too tight. So yeah, all that looks good right there. I'm going to put the screen back on and now we can flip around. Looking at the back, we have the same situation here with the rollers on the hot end. There's two stationaries on top and one adjustable on the bottom. And so on mine here, they're a little tight, so we need to loosen it. And there we go. That feels much better. So this should be pretty free and feel really nice and smooth and have no wobble in it.
Again, if you're too tight, you want to loosen them up. And if you're too loose and wobbles, tighten them up a bit. So we do also have rollers here on the side that roll on these channels. And these are not as critical, but you want to, you know, get them close. As long as they kind of spin, it's good. So on mine, everything seems to be pretty decent and they all spin. You don't want to mess too much with these unless they're just binding like crazy because you'll never really get them perfect. And because the Z-axis moves so slow and so little, these are definitely not as critical. And also, I didn't mention that we do need to check our belt here on the X-axis, which actually is pretty good right there, I think. And it feels really smooth. That's what we want to see and feel. I don't really like how we can't see the rollers in here or in here, which makes it kind of a mystery if they're running true or not. It does feel smooth, so I'm gonna think everything is fine in there. I wish they would have made little sights on the top or the side or somewhere where you could at least glance at it. Now I know that you can take this cover off to see. There's a bolt here and a bolt on the bottom, if you are curious, but the one on here is completely sealed and you can't really take it apart easily. But yeah, we're pretty much done with putting everything together and checking the rollers and belts.